1941, Jim Michener returned east, this time to begin a new job as a textbook editor at Macmillan Publishing. He possessed the desire to be a writer, but had yet to find his inspiration. He wouldn't have long to wait. The war affected Michener deeply. I think it brought out a great deal of patriotism. So at 35, well past the age when most American men were drafted into service, Jim Michener enlisted in the U.S. Navy. He was assigned to the South Pacific. One day in 1944, Michener boarded a Navy cargo plane bound for headquarters in French New Caledonia. As the plane approached the airstrip, the sky darkened, creating almost zero visibility on the primitive runway. Just as the plane was about to touch down, the landing gear froze. It came down the runway on its, on its belly, uh, sparks flying, and it was a horrific experience. And several hours later, this near-death experience had a chance to kind of play out in his mind. And, and really what it made him do was re-examine his life. For some hours, I walked back and forth on that Tantuta strip and began to think about my future. What do I want to do with the remainder of my life? What do I stand for? As I looked out and could see the low mountains I had escaped, I swore, I'm going to live the rest of my life as if I were a great man. I think one of the decisions he made was he's got, to, he's got to get very serious about his life. That he has time on his hands, enormous amounts of time waiting in the South Pacific for something to happen. I began to listen with attention as men told their stories. He knows the South Pacific, he knows the characters, he's met them. So, with that time, he begins to, to record. I wish I could tell you about the South Pacific, the way it actually was the endless ocean, the infinite specks of coral we call islands. With the realization that he is the voice of the Pacific War, and that is this conflict, this war, can be examined through the, the waiting lives of these people. I wish I could tell you about the sweating jungle, the full moon rising behind the volcanoes, and the waiting, the waiting, the timeless, repetitive waiting. It's as if this person had appeared from nowhere and written something of astounding literary quality. Twenty years after Robert Spiller had challenged him in that small classroom at Swarthmore, Jim Michener had finally found his inspiration. <laughs> 